Hey everybody, I'm Luke Diebold and I've been building Quasar sites for the past three years and absolutely love it. So in this video, I want to help you get started building a web application with Quasar and we'll also explore some of the things that make Quasar special along the way. The best way to learn is by doing, so let's build a Quasar project and I'll show you how it works. npm install, add the global flag in there and we'll say at Quasar slash CLI. So in this video, we'll use Quasar CLI, but you can also use Vue CLI or even UMD. Now in the community, we prefer to use Quasar CLI because it comes with some big benefits like exporting to other platforms. Cool, so now that that's done, we can say Quasar create, and we'll call this project Quasar fun. It's gonna ask us a few questions. I'm basically just gonna say enter all the way down. And notice that we can add linting, TypeScript, Vuex, Axios. We're just gonna use linting by default. And I basically just pressed enter all the way down there. And that's done, so let's CD into Quasar-Fun and then open that in Visual Studio Code. And now if we come up here and say Quasar Dev, we're ready to start coding. And there we go. So this image in the center here, that's our index.view file. So we wanna jump into that so we can start playing around. Let's go source and pages index.view. That's the image that we were just seeing before. And I'll prove it to you. Hello there. Save it. And there's the text. Now let's whack this over to the size, get out a full screen and whack this over to the right side. And that just gives us a little bit of a nicer developing experience. Let's start with one of Quasar's components, Q dash input. And you'll notice that we always have this Q dash at the start of Quasar's components. Now we can say V dash model and I'm going to put in their name. So we're going to model a variable called name. And let's come down here and say data return and set name equal to an empty string. Now I can put in my name, Luke, and we've got that field working. It looks a little bit bland though. So let's add a little bit of styling to it and some other things as well. So how about this? We change things up so that we can change these attributes more easily. And how about we set the color equal to pink? Save that. Oh, and I forgot the slash here. And there we go, now it's pink. We can also add a label. So let's set that equal to name. And now we've got this label and it floats up when we click on it, which is a really nice effect. We can also make it outlined, which gives us a really nice outline effect. And that's actually what they use in the Google Contacts app, this exact effect. We can also change that to field. This is something that I use a lot just because it makes the input stand out a little bit more. And that's just an idea of what it's like working with Quasar components. And let's just quickly check another one out, Q dash button. And let's give it a label of click me. And I'll also give it an icon of message, a color of green, and let's change the size to extra large. There we go, just gives you an idea of the power that we have available straight out of the box. And look, the Quasar team and I want this introductory video to be really short, but just know that the component library is a major part of Quasar. And I can honestly say Quasar has the most impressive component library I've ever seen. So check it out in the docs after this video. But for now, let's move along and actually build this project. I'm going to open up the console and let's go back into full screen here. And now we can say Quasar build, Quasar build. And that's automatically going to build the project for us. And we'll get a new directory up here in a moment that will hold all of our build files. So there it is, we got dist and notice that we've got SPA. So we just built an SPA application. And now what we can actually do is CD into dist, CD into SPA. So now I'm sitting inside this folder here and then just say Quasar serve. And now that application is being served. So if you wanted to serve this in production, that's actually a way that you could do it saying Quasar serve. Let's jump into there and there we go. This is a served version of our application. Really cool stuff. Now we can also build this as a PWA. So let's come back here and say Quasar build and change the mode to PWA. Quasar is going to do a whole bunch of cool stuff for us and automatically build a progressive web application. However, notice that we now have this source PWA folder, which allows us to add all of the PWA type functionality to our application if we wanna have a little bit more granular control. It's finished now and notice that we have the PWA folder. If we CD into there, dist CD PWA, Quasar serve, then now we can serve our PWA application. So let's control click that and check this out. Now we get this little icon here so we can install our application on the user's computer or phone. So now if I click on that and say install, we have basically a desktop app version of our application. How cool is that? So crossing out of that, 
let's move along and see what else we can do. Actually, first I want to emphasize something here. When starting with Quasar, it can feel a little bit bloated. With all these features and components available, it can feel like you'll end up with a massive bundle size. Now, it turns out that's actually not the case. So by default, Quasar actually only pulls in the components that you actually use. So the fact that I'm saying Q button here, that means that Quasar behind the scenes is going to pull in the Q button component. And if I use the Q input component, then it will pull that in out of the Quasar library. But by default, all of the components are not included. Quasar does some smart stuff behind the scenes to make sure that you're only using the absolute minimum of what has to be used in your application. Super cool stuff. Moving on. So when we use Quasar CLI, Quasar actually wraps view, which allows it to easily export to other platforms. So that's why you'll notice we have no main.js file. Okay, so notice in source, we don't have an index.js or a main.js where we can hook into the view application. So in order to do that, in order to hook into view and the other aspects of Quasar, we actually create what's called a boot file. And I'm gonna show you what that is because it's easy to explain with an example. We'll say, let me just CD back here. Quasar, new, boot, and I'm going to call this day.js. And what this boot file will do is make day.js available throughout our entire application. So if we jump into boot here, we now have that day.js file, and I can import the day.js library. Import day.js from day.js, and let's actually install that. So yarn add day.js. And then over here, what I can actually do is pull out the view instance. So check it out. I can now tap into the view instance here and say dot prototype dot dollar sign day.js is equal to day.js. So basically what we're doing here is we're pulling in the day.js library and we're setting it to the day.js variable on the view instance. And we can do a whole bunch of other cool stuff like view.use. We can say view.mixin. If we want global mixins, we can say router dot before each, if we want to perform some actions before each route for stuff like authentication, we can say store.commit. Basically, a whole bunch of stuff that we might want to do via hooking into the application is available within these boot files. So anyway, back to our day.js example. Oh, and let me get rid of those auto imports that I just accidentally created. And now if we come back to index.view. I can actually say here, dollar sign day.js refresh the page, and the reason that isn't working yet, the reason we're not seeing that text is because you have to register your boot files as well. So let's come here to quasar.conf.js, and this is where we configure our Quasar application. And if we search for the word boot, we can now say day.js. And basically day.js here has to line up with the name of our boot file, day.js. So now let's come back here, and there we go. We have the day.js function. Let's come back to the index, and then we'll just call that function and that should give us the current time. And there we go, it works. Pretty cool stuff. And by the way, we can go one step further than boot files by creating app extensions. And Quasar's app extension capabilities are truly mind-blowing. Every inch of Quasar has been beautifully architected so that it's simple to use if you're just getting started, but also easy to extend if you're a power user. So let's install an app extension and check it out. We're not gonna create one, we'll just install one that's available to us through the Quasar community. Quasar extension add at Quasar, and then this is going to be the Q calendar extension. So let's go ahead and install that. And while that's happening, I might actually come here and show you how we're actually going to use the app extension. So we'll need a style tag here because this app extension has some styles that it uses behind the scenes. So we'll say source is equal to at quasar slash quasar dash UI dash Q calendar slash dist slash index dot CSS. By the way, I'm not memorizing all of this. This is all just taken from the Q calendar docs. Now let's come down here and import the component, import Q calendar. And we're going to import that from at quasar slash Quasar UI Q calendar. Once again, this is all sitting within the Q calendar docs. And now we can actually use that component. So components, whack it in there. And let's get rid of all of this and see what it looks like. Save it. 
and there we go. That's how easy it was to pull in a phenomenal extension that's available to us through the Quasar community. By the way, with this extension, you could quite easily recreate the entire front-end functionality of Google Calendar, which is unfortunately beyond the scope of this tutorial, so I'm going to have to move on. So the last thing I want to show you is the build modes that are available to us. Let's say Quasar build dash dash help. And if I scroll up a little bit here, here we go. We've got all of the build modes shown just there. So we've got SPA, which I already showed you, which is the default. SSR, which is a server-side rendered application. If you're interested in that kind of thing, you can do it in Quasar and Quasar does it really well. PWAs, which I also showed you, applications that you can install on phones and install through your browser. If you want a native application, then you can use Cordova or Capacitor, and that means that you can export to platforms like Android and iOS. We've also got Electron, which means we can make desktop applications. So we've covered Windows, Mac, Ubuntu by using Electron, and BEX, which is a really cool new addition to the export library, which is a browser extension. So you can literally make browser extensions using Quasar and just export it straight to a browser extension. How cool is that? And let me be abundantly clear here. Having all of these build options don't add bloat to your other builds. Your SPA will remain a small file size even if you decide to export to all of these other platforms. It's great because if you're a novice developer starting out, you can start with an SPA and work up to other build modes when you're ready, when you get a little bit more experience. So how unbelievably cool is that? So if you wanna write code that can export to all major platforms without ending up with bloated files, and if you want access to the single most impressive component library I've ever seen, hands down, then here's what I recommend you do next. One of two things. Either check out the components section of the docs and start playing around. It is insanely cool. The docs are super friendly and everything's really graphical so you can have a play around as you do it. Or if you'd rather, watch the next video because we've only scratched the surface of the most impressive front-end framework I've ever seen. Have fun and I honestly can't wait to see what you build using Quasar.